that's just so full of love. It was um, a very tranquil place and it was right on the water, very lovely at the time. Some came out of Washington, D.C., and then we had others who came out of Southern Maryland. We began to know each other, and the towns, uh, the people, became close. Everybody took care of everybody. We never wanted for anything. We embrace our, our youth. We embrace our seniors. We were determined to make it and make a better place for us to raise our families. It was a wonderful opportunity for families to get started and especially for African Americans. The blacker this community became demographically, the higher the educational attainment level and the higher the affluence level. from reading and listening to the elders that uh, North Wentwood, the first settlers, came around 1886. And uh, they came from Southern Maryland. Well, Brentwood um, was an originally founded by um, a captain in, in the army. And um, he figured that he would sell plots of his land to some African Americans um, from the Civil War, from his troop. So, uh, when he did that, then a, a few of them decided that they would buy parcels of land, build homes on them, and then um, sell them to other African Americans. And once they started doing that, uh, then they decided to separate from Brentwood. So then you had Brentwood, you also had North Brentwood. We uh, incorporated North Brentwood in 1924. You had to incorporate in order to get the sewage and the electricity, things of that nature. Brentwood, um, and I, I can say, I think during those times, you know, there was prejudice. Prejudice was, was really rapid at that time. And um, Brentwood did not have any relationship with North Brentwood. The blacks start here, the whites start there. So there was no relationship. But it was a melting pot of people who were very uh, aggressive in doing the positive thing. Some came out of Washington, D.C., and then we had others who came out of Southern Maryland. We began to know each other, and the towns, uh, the people, became close. We just knew that we were family. Everybody knew each other. Everybody knew all everybody's children, grandchildren, and it was just a big, happy family. You couldn't always have your own uh store. You couldn't always go into a store. I mean, everybody knows you didn't always have your own schools. We had our Rosenwald schools come into effect in the 1920s and 30s. Julius Rosenwald, who uh, set up a fund, he would pay for African Americans to build a school, and that he would pay for half of that. African Americans would have to um, give the other half, and they would have to build it. The funding would be for the school, for the housing for the teachers, and the salary for the teachers as well. Townships were significant so that you could apply for that funding and so that you could get more funding. I mean, this is what North Brentwood uh, and Fairmont Heights and Eagle Harbor and Glen Arden strive for. Eagle, Eagle Harbor is a historic uh, black town. I, mean, I say black because it was founded basically for blacks before blacks could buy property on the water in, uh, in Maryland. Uh, it was founded in 1929. and. Um, People got together and, and bought lots that were for sale. Uh, as a matter of fact, a black man actually uh, owned the land originally, and he split it up into parcels. Uh, he sold them in a paper in Washington, D.C. So most of the folks that bought property then uh, were from the Washington, D.C. area. At first it was, you know, a port town, so it was just used, you know, up and down uh, the river for transport of, of goods. African-American families would purchase parcels there. Uh, for extended periods of time, so it was more like a summer home instead of uh, a day trip. The population, the last time I looked at the census, was 60 people. And out of those 60 people, you'd probably say we have maybe 20, 25 houses. And of the 20, 25 houses, probably only about 10 or 15 of those are inhabited year round. So uh, most of the people come down in the summer and uh, they stay a few nights or weeks or whatever and go back and forth to uh, their. Uh, surrounding, well, they're, they're permanent homes either in the Washington, D.C. area or the Baltimore area. Fairmont Heights was founded in 
Fairmont Heights is a very historic town who started out with families who wanted to come. Basically, they came from the District of Columbia and they wanted to have homes of their own. So this farmland was available and they came, they built, they stayed. We became chartered in 1935 and from that time, the citizens have made sure that the town has kept that status. So even though our money was small, we did what we could with what we had. Fairmont Heights was very significant because they did get their township as well. Uh, kind of f similar to North Brentwood wanting to get that township for their own municipality and their own rights and grants and monies and things like that. Uh, they're very close to Washington, D.C. They do have a lot of homes there that are still standing, uh, that are still historic in significance. Uh, one being the Portia Pittman House, uh, Portia Washington, who was the uh, granddaughter or daughter of Booker T. Washington, uh, and she married a famous architect there. William Sidney Pittman was his name and his wife was also very instrumental in a lot of the buildings that were constructed in the town of Fairmont Heights. The housing stock, a lot of it came from the Sears and Roebuck model. They were purchased from Sears and Roebuck, they were constructed, and those homes are still lasting very well now. The town has a total official historic designation as of November 18, 2011. As history rolls on, we want to always be remembered as a town who offered so much to its citizens and was historic from day one. The Norton has been talked about as the heart and the hub of the black community of Prince George's County. Um, and in doing so, it got that, that name, the description, that title, by way of many of the things that it had accomplished um, over its uh, years. Well, in doing our research from Glen Arden, uh, we found out a lot about uh, their sense of community uh, in Glen Arden. With that, they developed a lot around, uh, around recreation. Um, there was a lot of involvement with children there. Um, Glen Arden was, had a lot of church involvement as well. Uh, not to say the other communities didn't. They had their uh, St. Joseph Catholic Church, um, and that was founded uh, in the 1920s. And the uh, reason being I still mention that is because St. Joseph Church is still standing today. Well, a lot of people who uh, lived in Glen Arden also worked in D.C. And so um, in order for them to transport or for them to get there, they relied heavily on the WBNA, uh, which was a railroad service uh, from Washington, D.C. into Maryland. And also the B&O, um, several of them worked on the railroad as well. In describing um, Glen Arden, um, especially in comparison to other African-American communities that became incorporated. Um, Fallon Heights, as well as North Brentwood, as well as um, Eagle Harbor, were bound by other communities around it. Uh, Glen Arden was not constrained by those boundaries, so we uh, are continuing to grow. We embrace our, our youth, we embrace our seniors, providing uh, programs that um, impact them positively. We're known for our partnerships with our uh, businesses, local businesses, local churches. We're open to change. It takes us a, a minute to get on board with it, but once we get it, we take it and we just run with it, and that's why we're a city on the move. The blacker this community became demographically, the higher the educational attainment level and the higher the affluence level. Our legacy is, uh, is one of being excellent for a long time. It is a great community and uh, I just feel like if we, if we just keep on working that we can make it a better community. Our progress um, has continued to be made with its growth, expanding, um, as well as uh, the kind of development that um, we have in our, in our homes. Prince George's County has done so much with their rich history. It's possible for us to have this history and share it with not just the state or with the county, but also with the rest of the world. The more we are together and work together, the more benefits we have for our children. And that's what all of this is about, the children. As Malcolm X says, a free man names himself. You have to tell your own story. We're going down in history. 
And it is so important for me to have a record of the things that we have contributed and where we will be going from here. When we unify, when we work together, when we have a common goal, when we want the best for our people, it can be done.